With our Mercedes stripped down and all damages removed, it's now time to crack on with the rebuild. So in today's video, we're gonna get these panels put back on the car and try and get it over to paint. But there's a twist. The painter can only get it on a Thursday, which only leaves us a couple of days to get it there. And we've never worked on the Mercedes before, so we're not that familiar with it. So follow us along and see if we can get it built up in time. Right, just back from Rotherham with all the parts to fix the mech. We managed to find them all at one breakers, which is quite handy. It's filled the van. Right. There's an editor in the way. <laughs> Sorry, Alan. Um. To definitely organise this a bit better, like so it looks better, but bonnet actuators that make the bonnet pop up like that. Something to do with saving a pedestrian. If you run someone over, it shoots the bonnet up. Cautions the bonnet. We've got a load of other bits that we don't really need, but we'll just make a, a pile of plastics. Right, so we've got shit guards, bumper, wrap pack, slam panel, headlights, pair of wings, bonnet. It gives us all the plastics, which I don't, we do need the inner arches. We've got the plastic arches. Don't really need these, but it all come with the, the setup. We've got passenger door and the side skirt. And I think that's all it needs, but until we get into it, we're not going to know. Before the panels are fitted to the car, the painter's asked if we can send them over to him so he can start prepping them for the final paint job. It's time to strip these rubbers off this door. So anything that's going to get in the way of them spraying the edges in, maybe even that trim. Cool. Oh, it's just going to edge all around the, the edges of there and then where the fold on inside the engine bay. Trying to get them in, in colour for us. Same on this side, same on that one, and then the door. Everything can be put back on the car then and then painted. Everything that can be painted off the car is the bumper and the bonnet. It'll just speed up the whole process of building the car really. So. Anyway, let's get stripping. To get these doors fully stripped down, we're going to need to remove the seals. The seals are held on by multiple clips, so you'll see Andy removing them carefully one by one with the trim defect to save ripping the rubber. The so next we need to remove the rubber window seal and it just pulls off, but when we got to the end, we ran into a bit of a problem. Shoulder. Oh, come on. Don't t up. So the last bit of the rubber seal was held on by this bit of plastic trim, but we just couldn't seem to figure out how you get it off. What the f Man. Stupid Mercedes door. Hold on, twist it. Just like that. Mm. When you put it in. There you go. Oh. You pull off and then you twist them a little bit and they fall off. It's a bit fucking crazy. Yeah. Now you put the no screws in it. There we go. That's out. Rovery jubbery. We've sent all the panels over to the painter and now the fun can begin. Right, so it's a new day, it's time to start rebuilding this mech. To start building the car up, we're going to start with the wrap pack by dropping it on its rubbers, then we'll connect all the hoses, and then we can fit the slam panel. Got a bit of corrosion on the, on the rad, so clean it up where the O-ring sits so it doesn't leak. Spraying a bit of this on so it slips on, you know. So next we're going to fit the crash bar. We're going to start by lining up the crash bar with the mountain points and the shaky legs. Oh, you got it. Oh. We'll give it a gentle tap at the hammer until the bolt holes line up and we can tighten it all in. So while we're at the front of the car, I'm going to put this air intake pipe on just to get it off the floor. So the air intake pipe just takes cold air from the front of the car and forces it into the air box and then feeds it into the engine. So also at the front of the car, there's various clips and plugs that need to be fitted, like attaching the horns and stuff like that. So I've roughly got those all in place and plugged in, connected up. And so the next job is just to chuck on these engine braces that we removed. The only reason why we took them off is to polish them up so they'd look nice. And it was only later on that we realised that they were covered by the scuttle panel. So with the front of the car mostly boxed off, I'm going to go round to the back and see what I can do about this dent in the bumper. Get a bit of heat on this to see if this pops up. And right, so there's a big pushed in dent there. Just going to warm it up and see if it'll pop out. Oh, 
popped out. It's just that it's got stretch marks in, in the paint there. From because it was creased right on that. Mm. Put stretch marks there. To be honest, there's a bit cracking in the paint there as well. So it's gonna need painting like but at least it's popped out. So the next thing I want to do is just check the battery because I've had it on charge all day, so I'm gonna see what it's up to. So what I haven't heard that it's goose that battery in it. Ah, goose that battery. Is it? I was say, I've not heard it going all day. I thought it was on the first time, did Not even one volt in it. So we can try and, they like say, jump start it somehow. Yeah. To get the charge started, yeah. Because the charge won't kick in. And try it with the jump pad. Yeah. And the battery. It. Charge it. Well. I'm not sure that power there. I'm going to turn this off. Here's a crap battery charger, this. Mm. We need the proper one, though. So, usually the needle on the charger should start moving, but as you can see here, it's not responding and not moving. So, I don't think our little tricks work this time. Well, that didn't work. Sometimes you can actually do that. You just basically just put a good battery to your dead battery when that won't take a charge. You sort of, you blag it a bit that it's got voltage to start taking charge, but just not this time. No, oh, look, see. I know a battery for the van. As soon as it realises it's under well, that's, that's got a bit of power in there, so if you had jump leads from that to that, yeah, so it yeah. doesn't think it's full. So luckily, Andy said he's got one more little trick up his sleeve. Ready? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that works when you're No. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, who the f are you trying to kid? Yeah. <laughs> sure, you do, <don't> kid. <laughs> Funny that, like. <laughs> so now the painter's finished with all this prep work and got everything in the same colour for us, I can get on with building this door up and getting it back on the car. Alright, so I've just been to the painter and paint picked the door back up. They give him door wing, door and two wings just to blow the edges in, so what he's done is, you can literally just see there, he's painted the inside and then round just onto the front so we can bolt all the wings on, and he can paint them on the car, and they'll have to take them back off, so you should edge them all in for us. You can line it all up, get all your gaps right, bolt them down, leave them on. Same with the door. He's just painted the inside of the door for us and blew it all over to get rid of the black. And then I think he's edged that bit. Yeah, so he's edged it like in there, for us as well. So I can swap all the swap everything around now. Build this door off. Strip that door down. Build this door off. Get the door on the car. As soon as I went to start this job, I realised that these hidden the bolts and I don't know where they are. Right, so what we'll do instead, we'll get these wings put on. Because I don't know where the bolts are for them. And these are the bolts to do the door, so I'll sort this out instead. Right, so to get this panel fitted, we're going to carefully line up the bolt holes, making sure we don't scratch any of the original paint. And there's about eight bolts to fit on each panel. Biggest problem we have in here, right, is literally, you can have a bag in your hand in one second, you put it down. I kind of shit remember where to put it. Turn that down, look at my bags. Bolt. Wings in there they are. There's one more bolt you've got to put in through like about there on the back of, through the back of the door. But I sort of need to I need to get the bonnet hinges on. Put the bonnet on. I'm somewhat close the bonnet so we can see what gaps are like so I can tighten the wings down properly. But I might do all that. Tomorrow when Woods is back and it's a little bit easier with two of us. So you're struggling, I've got other bits to be doing, I need to strip that door down over there. So I might do that just so this door can go back on. And if you have to push it outside and it rains, there's not a big hole in the side of the car. I think that's my plan. Right, so Andy's called me back and told me where he's hidden the bolt. So the next thing I'm going to do is start stripping this door down so I can remove the glass from it and fit it in the new door. The reason I'm doing this is to make sure that the tints match from the driver's side to the passenger side because I'd hate to build them all up and the tints be slightly off. So now we've got the glass open, I'm going to give the glass a quick clean. We're going to get the window clamps put back on the window. If you've never seen inside of a door before, these clamps are what clamp the glass to the window runners. There's probably no need to do this really, as in like swap the glass. 
But no in my look, we put it all together and the glass would therefore be slight different tint to something. So for what it's worth, it's getting done. All right, so after fitting these clamps to the window and giving it a bit of a clean, we're going to get the window fitted inside the door. But oh, don't do this to me, car's in the way. Hang on. To fit the window inside the door, these clamps bolt to the window runners, so you're not bolting straight through pure glass and you won't smash it. Oh, you bagger. Come on, lad. I'm not put that in. That's better. Forgot to put that rubber inside that runner there. Really? Need is that? Yes. Very. With the glass back inside the door, I'm going to tighten up the clamps. I'm going to give the window mechanism a quick test before I put on the motor. So now that we've got all the glass fitted inside the door, we can get all the wiring loom fitted and the door will nearly be ready for fitting back to the car. So as I'm fitting the wiring loom back to the car door, I've got to move the glass out the way as most of the loom sits round the back of the glass runner. I can clip the loom cover back into the door and then start connecting up all the other wires on this side. So now I've done that, I can put the glass back inside the door to protect it from getting knocked or banged. So the reason I'm doing this is, once the window motor goes back on, I won't have manual access to put the window up or down. You want me to put this door on? Just so you know, them spiny bits and that groovy bit there slides into there, spiny bit, groovy bit. Is it Emmy? Yeah. Oh. Stand it up. Hey, what was that? Oh, that can't stay in there, whatever that noise is. Hang on. There's a noise inside me though. What's that pretty thing there? Come in. Don't ask where the bolt's from. Ah, I bet he's dropped it from taking the wing mirror off. Check the one more. So now that we've got the bolt out the door and there's no more rattling noises, we're going to get this door back on the car. Yeah. There's no fucking need, is there? No. So what in theory that's on now? Yeah. Can I let go? Um, oh, hang on a minute. That bolt's going all the way in, but once the two bolts are tightened, then, yeah. <sighs> yeah, a nice motor. <laughs> John, I wants this. And my family's dad wants it as well. With the new door fitted to the car, Liam and Terry have decided to call it a day there. Right, so next day, I figured out last night that I'm going to have to basically strip this whole door back down again because the door handles are different and swap all, we're just going to swap all the loom and everything because we're going to end up with an extra wire and no, no my luck, there'll be a light that comes on the dash and the fucking doors open or something. <laughs> yeah. Strip the rest of that door down, completely swap everything I think we're going to do. The actual handle looks different. Mm. It's got like, it's like two halves. See the line down mm. there? Key the sentry. It will be, yeah. You know, so you walk onto the car <clears> and it senses the key, whereas ours is just... I wonder what year they started doing that then? Because has this got any, like an English and battle? Look, there's a look. That, uh, that's the way we're on about. We'll just put everything on there. We need a wing mirror. Because we found ours is naked. Yeah. Literally went to, went to just move the wing mirror out the way and it, it snapped. All that bit snapped in there. The actual wing mirror bit's fine. It's the basey bit. Hello. Right, so as I crack on, stripping the door for the second time round, Andy's going to make a start on the headlights. Right. Try putting the headlights, see if everything lines up. Look at these babies. Right, so to fit these headlights, it's really simple. There's just two 10mm bolts on the top of the headlights and one hidden right behind the back of it. So we'll just tighten them up and you're good to go. Yeah. 
So now Andy's fitted the bonnet hinges, we can get the bonnet fitted and then we can line up all our fan gaps properly to get them nice and straight. Yeah. Right, so the next thing we want to do is test fit this front bumper. We do have to strip this bumper down until it's ready for paint, but before we do that we're just going to get it on and make sure everything lines up nicely. Shut that bonnet. Right guys, so we're nearly at the point of taking this car for paint. We've got all the front end that we bought bolted on and this is just a little sneak peek of what the front end should look like. It's slipping gate. <laughs> yeah. Right, so with all the panels fitting to the car, minus the back bumper, Andy's gone to GSF car parts to pick up the new battery whilst I get on with doing this door handle. There's a little grub screw down there, but you won't even be able to see it on camera. But anyway, when you're taking door handles out, online with the door handle, there'll be a little hole and the torx bit inside. Might not always be a torx bit, but there's a good chance it is. And you just back that off and then the thing will pull out. Obviously tighten it back in when you're done. Lovely, but that was just a massive ball like I could have done without really, all because of the friggin' door handle. Oh well, next time check door handles first, and then we'll have that mistake again. So now I've got this door handle boxed off, and you should nearly be at GSF car parts picking this battery up. Right, just comes to GSF car parts here. Seem to be the cheapest on batteries. Well, that f***ed that up. Just comes to GSF. Some batteries, they seem to be the cheapest about. Well, one one's gone dead and we need one for the Merc. Also bought a service kit. Let's get back, get some work done. Right guys, so with Andy throwing in the battery now, we're pretty close to having this car ready for paint. The only few bits we have to do now is run a quick diagnostic scan, take the car out for a quick spin, and then we can strip the front and rear bumpers down and have them ready for paint. So this has got a lot of battery ones, um, power supply, of the hydraulic valve, what's that? Collision prevention, left rear engine, hood, lifter, squib fault, crash sensor, front left door, fault. There we go, I'm just gonna f***ing delete these, see what stays on. Um, we need to go and get some coolant, antifreeze. It's deleted <coughs> every f***ing thing, apart from the door. Left front door control unit. So apart from that door, everything's deleted. Now whether it comes back on, it's a different story, but. Right, so we managed to clear all the OBD faults, except for a few, which turned out to just be the door that we still had stripped down because we were waiting for the wing mirror. So we're also having a problem with these headlights. They didn't show up on the diagnostics, but they just won't work. Right, so latest update with these headlights on, the, on this C-Class. Our headlights don't have an LED code. It's normally, it's in there on our other red light that sort of survived the crash, but these two we bought, when we bought the complete front end, don't have nothing on it. See that there? There isn't, there isn't that sticker on our red lights. That's what you used to get the codes, the modules. So that's how you code them out. As I've just got blank spaces. But this we've been had off with red lights really. Yeah, someone's had us off with red lights to be honest. So the only other thing to do is try and buy another one of these and swap our modules to to them basically so that's where we're up to with the lights anyway just looking on ebay now for some stuff right time to get the bumper stripped and get it to the paint shop <coughs> Chilton. The car's nearly ready for paint, so we're just going to turn it around so we can pull the back bumper off. There's a bit of a damage on there. I'm going to take it up the road while we're, while we're test, testing it. Yeah, that's roasting. Oh, that fucking seat belt on. Going to get shelled for that by Stephen again. Yeah. Oh, ain't these freaking thingies? It's a chunky ass. Oh, yeah. Weird. Oh, seat belts up, everyone. Yeah, look, seat belts. We got shout that last time. What's that noise? Is that that thing underneath? Pulled it off. Did you? Huh? Yeah. Got your pot out of it. Seat belts up. Seat belts up. Make sure you put that back on. Oh, yeah. 
Just the front of me, that's still on. I pulled the big side off. Beery. <coughs> You're fucked anyway. No, but it's only literally just touching the floor. Be fine. Oh, she missed. Give some skins. Big brakes. Turns on a fucking penny. Yeah, it's got a hackney steering. <laughs> What's that? Americans won't know what that is. Fucking hell, mate. I'll pull out the oh. bed. We're on the hill, wacker. Well, there's fucking people now oh, rips on off. If you haven't got no noisy prop shafts or not on this time or anything like that. It was literally steering, dead responsive. Yeah, there's no knocks, no bangs, nothing. Put it over. Ooh. 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 What? So the last thing for us to do now is take this rear bumper off the car. We can get the car over to Carl for painting and hopefully within the week we'll get the car back looking nice and shiny. How's that end up back in? Whoa. Okay, now, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right, so the car's pretty much back together now. All we need to get is a, a wing mirror for that door. Bumper stripped down, that can go to him, and the rear bumper's off, so that can we basically get everything round to the painter now and get them to sort it out for us. You just need to book him for getting the wheels refaired because they're a bit butchered. When we get it back next week, we'll open a few surprise boxes. <laughs> few goodie boxes. I feel like it deserved it. Be a nice car when this is done. Yeah, so now we've got the car all ready for paint. We're going to take it round to him and we'll catch you in the next video. If you'd like today's video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment and all that biz. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>